You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. Hi there, Slow Down Society. Steph here, and we are on episode 132 of the Slow Living Podcast. I am recording this on Valentine's Day, and I'm recording it on Valentine's Day at 3.40 in the morning because I had insomnia last night. I got up at 3.10-ish and kind of decided, okay, Steph, what is the right thing for you here? What is what is the next best decision for you to do right now? And honestly, for me, I looked at the clock. I looked at my CPAP machine. It looks like I had five and a half hours of really good deep sleep. My body felt fine. My body felt strong and my brain was wide awake. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to heat up the house. I'm going to make myself a pot of coffee. I'm going to write out the Valentine's Day cards for Adam and for my kids. And I'm going to hit record and talk to you. Because if there is anything I want to impart on Valentine's Day and for you, is that you and your self-love for yourself needs to be completely and totally unconditional love, not transactional in any way, not, okay, if I do this, then I'm going to love myself, not, oh, if only I was this way, then I could love myself a little bit more. No, complete and total unconditional love. You're not going to hear this on Valentine's Day because I'm a bit of a <laughs> of a workhorse and I have pre-recorded quite a bit because I've got some travel coming up. We've got some family trips coming up. I have some work projects and deadlines. And so you're probably not going to hear this until mid-April. And that's okay. I needed to get it out of my brain and I wanted to share it with you. I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about diet culture and the health at every size movement. And it's something that I wholeheartedly believe in and I want to talk about and share with you. And I actually yesterday recorded an hour-long interview with someone from the um, the HAES, Health at Every Size Movement. And it's definitely a movement. And I think I'm going to scrap that interview. I re-listened to it. And while we were doing it, I felt a little uneasy. It felt like there was an agenda there. And it just wasn't something that I think would be beneficial for you in any way. And so I'm going to scrap that interview. Also, um, at the end, when we were talking uh, and we were trying to figure out if I should go on her podcast, she said, well, I don't want this to come out wrong, but what are your credentials? Um, like, Like, what are you? And so I don't have any letters behind my name. Um, if you're a longtime listener, I think you know that. And I'm okay with it. And she wasn't. And for her audience, it didn't work. And that's okay. That is okay. But it was really interesting because I'm like, oh, okay, cool beans. And um, and I let it go. And I stewed about it for a while. I talked to Adam about it for a while. And it sort of boils back to this uh, self-love. And deciding it doesn't matter what someone else thinks and whether or not they are projecting that you aren't good enough. If you know deep down inside that you're doing your best and you love yourself unconditionally, it doesn't matter. I like to kind of use 
the term how to so it's a it's a book on raising teenagers and it's called how to hug a porcupine when kids are prickly and when kids aren't feeling good about themselves they kind of roll up and they they start shooting barbs they start shooting um digs and and they're prickly and it's really hard to hug a porcupine it's really hard to hug someone who um is that way and is and is prickly and um and so there's a, another phrase that kind of gets thrown around at that hurt people hurt people and um and, and it's really interesting so just think about it if you are being unkind to yourself or if you're being unkind to others or if you think in some way you might be better than someone else that's a red flag that's something that i want you to pay attention to and kind of go back and think, why am I being so mean to myself right now? Why am I beating myself up in my brain? Why am I not being kind? And also, if you happen to be the kind of person that in order to make you feel good about yourself, you have to put someone else down or put that person in his or her place, that's another red flag and a sign to go within and really think deep, down, long, and hard. Why do I feel this sort of superiority complex right now? Why do I think I'm better than someone else? Um, Because that's not right. Because we're all just humaning around, trying to do the very best we can at all times. And that's what I want for you. I want you to have unconditional love. So I do want to talk a little bit about diet culture and the health at every size movement with you today. And I was hesitant. I was worried about talking about health at every size, although it comes up quite often um, in my one-to-one coaching. And when we do the Simple Shortcuts to Peace course, there's a whole module on health. and, um, And we talk about different markers of health And then we also do talk about diet culture and and being on a diet or off a diet or in a diet or following a diet or doing this diet. And and I think you know (laughs) that I'm a huge fan of acronyms. And so in this upcoming book manuscript that I'm writing, the Slow Living book, it'll come out, I think, in the fall with Dexterity Publishing. Um, I use the acronym for diet as do I eat this? Do I eat this? Is this something I eat? I don't know. It's not something I go on again or off again. It's just, do do I eat this? Does it work for my body? Does it make my body feel good? Does it make my body feel strong? Does it make me feel good about myself? There, I am not anti anything. I, I strongly believe in moderation in all things, including moderation. Um, making strict rules for yourself will not work ever in the long run. The only thing that really works in the long run is to slow down, simply look only within and decide, does this work for me? In our house, we keep a gluten-free home. And that's because my middle daughter has celiac disease. And we have decided as a family, it is best to just keep the house gluten-free because she's sway at school, but I want her to come home at any time. At always, 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 this is her home and she can look through the fridge and she can look through the pantry and she can go out in the garage and the storage unit shelves. Everything she can eat at any time. This is her safe place. I don't want her to ever think that she needs to stop and flip over a package and, and read it to make sure it's okay. It is okay. She and and that is what we've decided. Not all families that have a gluten-free family member decide to eat that way. They have different toasters, they have different cupboards, they have different cooking um utensils and pots and pans, and that's fine. There is literally no judgment because there is no right or wrong way to do anything. And if you're part of the Slow Down Society, you you are realizing that and you're learning that there's, there's no right or wrong way and no 
full-fledged recipe for living a long, happy, healthy life. Many of the people that work with me end up losing weight, but that's not what I'm all about. I don't care what the number says. I don't care. I, I truly want you to live your own best version of you, which is, quote unquote, the American dream. Figure out what works for you and then go for it slowly, steadily, teeny tiny baby steps. I track my steps every day and I don't obsessive compulsively write them down. I, I'm not a fan of bullet journaling or if if I don't do something one day, it means I've failed and I've got to start all over again. No, it's just data and it's just something to be aware of. But I know my body feels the best when I am in a certain step count, when my heart rate is a certain way, and when I'm more active than not. And it has nothing to do with looking a certain way. Sure, I'm a little bit vain and, uh, and, and I would prefer to look a certain way. Um, but it, it it's just not right now for me, a driving force. So one of the things that come up a lot when you're talking about health at every size is diet culture and fat phobia and things like that. And I grew up as a kid in the 90s and so sort of saw this waif um, sort of imagery on television and in magazines and um one of my favorite shows at the time was Ally McBeal. And now I'm, it's so uncomfortable for me to watch it because I'm so worried about Calista Flockhart. Um, because to me, what's playing out on screen is an eating disorder. And I just feel dreadful for her. I just want to hug her and cuddle with her and tell her she's okay. And, and so as society grows and evolves and things come in, fashion and, and out of fashion, that sort of 90s wafy, frail look, thankfully, has gone out the window. And I am thrilled for that. I'm thrilled for that for my kids. I'm raising three daughters. I want to be strong and powerful and love their skin and, and feel like if they wanted to, they could go for a mile run and, and it would be just fine. And if they wanted to, they could, um, I don't know, maybe fight back from a bad guy or, or something like that. I want them to feel strong and, and powerful and, and pay attention to what their body feels like and, and what food fuels it and what food doesn't. I know sometimes I want to sit on the couch and eat Chunky Monkey for dinner because that's just what I feel like. My brain wants it. My body wants it. And so it is what it is. Is it every day? Nope. Do I pay attention to, hey, Steph, you had ice cream the other day and you ate the whole carton. So maybe you lay off for a little bit. Yes, I do. I am aware, but it doesn't mean I'm casting negative judgment to myself because it's all about unconditional love. I love even when I make a decision that Steph of a few days ago wouldn't make. We talked in the last few episodes, actually it was this last episode about hormones. And I was lucky enough to have Sandy McDonald on of the PMDD, um, I am PMD, I don't know, we'll link it again. But um, Sandy was amazing. And I knew from a very young age that sometimes I wanted certain things and did a certain way and had maybe some irrational thoughts. And I was in tune enough to realize that it was my hormones. And if you aren't right now in tune with your body, slow down. That is another red flag. You've got to know what's going on. I don't want you on a sluggish day to just chug the coffee and, and get to a certain point and then 
you're so ramped up that then you need to dumb it down and kind of quote unquote, turn yourself off by resorting to drugs or alcohol or some sort of downer, um, popping a whole bunch of something to put your body back to sleep. That's not healthy in the long run. Um, and, and, and it's something to just be aware of. Yes, sometimes in a deadline situation, you might need to amp it up a bit. You're, you might need to put it in overdrive to get through a work deadline or get through a particularly trying season of life. If you're caring for a family member who's on hospice or is going through a massive surgery, your cortisol level, your stress level will be higher. You're, you're, in, you're in fight or flight mode. You're definitely in the fight section. And that's what the human body was designed to do. The human body wasn't designed to be in that kind of position all the time. If you are in that position all the time, pay attention to it. Throw up another flag. I, I lost count of how many flags that I threw out today. But but just pay attention to that and 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 realize, okay, how many different wake-up calls do I need in order to really really decide on purpose that this is my time. It's my time. And I'm ready to take that next step. I'm ready to take care of myself. And I'm ready to love myself unconditionally. When we talk about health at every size, sometimes I feel like I am talking out of turn because I have never personally been someone someone looks at and um, dismisses in any way um, for for being overweight or for maybe visually looking like um, an overweight or an obese person. I personally have not had that life experience. And so I really don't know what that feels like to be dismissed um, because of being overweight or obese. And so I feel sometimes hesitant to talk about it. And if that's you, and if this is um, bringing up uncomfortable feelings, um, that's good. Um, acknowledge them, pay attention to them and and do some research and, and really find allies in your corner. Um, a lot of the reasoning that I've never been uh, really obese and, uh, and overweight in a visual sense is, well, one, vanity. Um, two, I'm kind of a, a type A driven control freaky person. And so um, there's the number on the scale that sometimes I pay attention to, but also the way my clothes fit. I am naturally a very frugal person. And the idea of buying larger size clothes, I just, um, I, I just won't do it. It's not in the budget. It's not part of what I've decided is important in our future finances and the way that I want to live. Um, I absolutely have overalls that I bought in 1994. I have different pairs of pants and skirts that I wore in the early 2000s. I, I kick myself sometimes because of my frugality and that I got rid of all of the work clothes that I had when I worked in the courthouse because those were some great clothes. <laughs> but I was told um, by very well-meaning friends that I would never fit into them again after having children. And um, I probably could, but I don't know because I got rid of them. Um, but anyway, it, it's just something that I'm aware of and I want you to be aware of. Hey there, are you looking for an easier way to meet your goals without sacrificing your ethics or morals? If so, you're going to want to check out the new masterclass I recorded on how to achieve more by learning how to slow down. I know it sounds like an oxymoron, but I promise you that this is a proven system that 
works. If you are ready to finally meet your personal and professional goals without sacrificing yourself or your sanity, check out this new recording at stephanieoday.com forward slash masterclass. Okay, back to this week's episode. So in our in our house right now, we've been watching um, the Gilmore Girls and we've been watching the Gilmore Girls because of my friend Jennifer uh, told me that last calendar year she watched the, the Gilmore Girls. So that was her kind of way of unwinding at the end of the night. And she's got a house full of boys. And so she wanted to watch a girly show all for herself. So she watched the Gilmore Girls. My friend Cheryl... Um, she actually gave me a Gilmore Girls DVD set um, before she moved away and she was kind of decluttering. And so she's like, here, you and the girls would like this. And and we just never watched it. And so, but it was always there of something that I should do and I should watch with um, the kids. And then Sandy Cooper on her uh, Balanced Mom cast, she was doing a recap of 2023, and she brought up the Gilmore Girls as one of the best things she and her daughter did in 2023. And I thought, okay, now it's time. I've got a 14-year-old in the house. Uh, her two sisters are away at school. Let's watch the Gilmore Girls. So we do. We watch the Gilmore Girls um, an hour or so, one episode, not even sometimes a full episode on a school and soccer night because we just don't have the time. But a lot of what is portrayed on screen in that show, when you look at it with today's eyes, is a lot of fat phobia and a lot of them talking what is a good food and what is a bad food? And, oh, I ate this. So now I need to punish myself by overworking out and, and doing things. And it was really a sign of the times and how people spoke and interacted with each other. But it's just something to be aware of. And what's interesting is um, because I am such a geek about research, I wanted to read Lauren Graham's memoir. And so she's got two and I reserved them in the library. And the other day I'm sitting in the doctor's office waiting um, for my youngest to have a physical. And so I'm going through her book and I knew I was going to record something about diet culture and the health at every size um, movement. And I thought it would be the interview. Um, but Lauren talks about it in her book and I flagged the pages and I want to read it to you. That's funny. We are now at 4.02 AM. So it's still very dark in my office. Um, so I need to put on an extra light. Um, so one thing she talks about is how, while she was filming the Gilmore girls, she was always on a diet. And for most of her adult life, she was always on a diet and her use of the word diet is an on again, off again um, way to lose weight, a way to lower the number on the scale, not necessarily to be healthy, but as a way to fit a, um, a visual aesthetic. Um, as I shared, I don't like the word diet in that way. I like it as a, do I eat this? It's just an eating plan. It's just who you are. A koala's diet is eucalyptus leaves. No one's going to say anything about a, a koala's diet. That's just what a koala eats. So um, Michelle, not Michelle, excuse me. Um, uh, Lauren Graham talks about her friend, Michelle, who happens to be a personal trainer and who taught her what her TDEE is, which is the totally daily energy expenditure, which is essentially the calories that you burn throughout the day. And so she has always kind of been aware of that and her um, heart rate. I too happen to kind of always be paying attention to that, mostly because I'm five feet. And what I can eat versus what my husband can eat is not the same. 
And so, yes, I I do know in general, thanks to my Fitbit, what my TDEE is on any given day. And sometimes I pay attention to that and decide, okay, well, I've already hit my calorie allotment for the day. And, and it's not a beat myself up thing. It's just a data point. It's just a fact. It just is what it is. I also track my heart rate due to the fact that I have anxiety. And so I want to know I'm feeling really anxious right now. I feel like my heart is racing out of my body. Am I having a heart attack or is this anxiety? And so then I can look at my Fitbit and like, it's okay, Steph, you're fine. You're you're not going to keel over right this second. But in her book, Lauren talks essentially about the same thing that we're talking about here with the Slow Living Podcast and with the, the slow figure out what works for you and then dismiss what others. So she is saying that she, and and I'm just going to read it to you. She's got a few top secret Hollywood tips and tricks for you. One, if you're trying to lose weight, you're going to be hungry, fairly cranky and irritating to your friends. Or maybe it's your friends who are irritating. It's hard to tell because you're so hungry. And you need to be like this every day for about two weeks to see results. And this comes up for me a lot with my coaching clients um, and in deciding whether or not the hunger they feel is justifiable hunger, um, whether or not it's an emergency, whether or not they truly do think they're starving um, or whether or not they need to slow down and think about it and 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 see is, is there other ways right now that my body can fuel itself is is there fat storage um we've all seen survivor we all know that the human body can find other ways of fueling itself so one of the reasons i really like um intermittent fasting is it sort of has trained my body to um, look for other ways of finding fuel and not in a fat phobic way in a, huh, this is really neat that my body was designed to go on a hunt uh, right now. So Jen Stevens, she writes, um, uh, what did she write? Delay, Don't Deny, which is a fantastic book. And what sort of helped me want to learn more about intermittent fasting. And that's why I wrote 246 Eat. But she talks about one, hunger is not an emergency. And two, the food in your belly is like the refrigerator. That's the the um, the food that's readily available. And then the, the fat storage is like the pantry. And so she just talks about shifting her body to go look for the food in the pantry. And, and I say this not in a triggery way, not in a diety way. I say this in just, huh, that's really interesting. And I'm going to do more research on that to see if that might possibly work for me. Okay. Um, this is back to, to talking as fast as I can, which is Lauren Graham's memoir. Two, I lost the most weight once right after a bad breakup. And then again, while rehearsing a Broadway show. Try, and her advice is, try to arrange for these things to happen at the same time, and then you'll really be looking good. Three, most successful diets involve eating very clean, healthy foods in small quantities with very few carbohydrates, almost no sugar, very little alcohol, and a ton of physical activity. This combination appears in almost every diet book out there. You can combine foods, count points, or act like you are French, Greek, Spanish, or Beyonce. While well, every diet varies slightly, I've read every single one of them, and I can assure you they all have the above in common. Four, bell bottoms will go in and out of style every few years for the rest of your life. This is a bit off topic, but it's just another thing I keep meaning to tell you. They'll change them just enough to make you think you need new ones. You do not keep the ones you already have. Stars may or may not be just like you. But generally, I've learned it's a mistake to think anyone else has the answer to pretty much anything. When I hear Kim Kardashian lost her baby weight on Atkins, I'll eat steak for three days straight until I remember that 
oh, yeah, I've tried this before and it didn't make me feel that great. You have to find what works for you, not what works for someone else. I kept trying to be vegan until I realized that part of my motivation was I wanted to go on the Ellen show and bond with her over it. I respect and adore Ellen so much, and she's always been so supportive of me as an actor, writer, and producer. She gave me the opportunity. She's given me opportunities I've never had before, and it's sort of like I wanted to repay her by being more like her, which, if you think about it, it's also the premise of the stalker movie, Single White Female. It's great to look up to people you admire, but you can't make life decisions motivated by the hope that you'll be invited to Helen, to Ellen and Porsches to eat lentils and watch Seinfeld. Okay, so that's a really good takeaway there is what is your motivation? What is it you're trying to achieve here? For me personally, I want to live a long, healthy life. I want to crawl around on the floor with my grandchildren. I want to model good behavior for my own daughters. I want to feel good in my body. Yes, sometimes I have a little bit of vanity in me and I want to look a certain way in a certain dress or a certain outfit. Um, But mostly, mostly I want to crawl around on the floor with my future grandchildren and be able to get up. Um, And that's just something I want for you and something to be aware of. Um, One other thing that is important to take note of is if you are trying to chase an arbitrary number of whether or not that number really makes sense for you and your body. The BMI charts, I personally do not think are a marker of good health. And the research now backs that up. Um, do your own research, but I happen to be five feet. And according to that BMI chart, I am in the overweight category. My husband is also in that overweight category. He can run. Well, he does run three times a week and he runs a 5k. Um, he does push-ups every morning while he's waiting for the water to warm up. And he does sit-ups every morning while he's waiting for the water to warm up. He just surfed a few weekends ago. Um, he's a very healthy guy. He happens to be in a BMI category, which can swing five pounds this way, five pounds that way. And he's in the overweight category. I, too, happen to be in that category. And I've been hesitant to share that because, again, as I said earlier, when you look at me, I don't have any of the markers of an overweight person just by looking at me. But I happen to be a little bit in that um, that section on that BMI chart. And it did make me feel bad about myself. It did feel like I wasn't playing the game right that I wasn't good enough, that I hadn't gotten an A on the paper, that I hadn't gotten all the gold stars. Um, I once had a doctor not understand what I meant when I asked, should I worry about this BMI number? And her response was, you're okay, but if you wanted to lose weight, you can. Well, I took that as a sign that I should. And so I spent a lot of time trying to lose. um, And and honestly, for my height, it was about four or five pounds. Um, But I was miserable and I didn't like it. And I was cranky, very similar to how Lauren Graham is talking in her book. I I was cranky. I was miserable. It was not my my happy weight. It was not my set weight. Um, My clothes still all fit, regardless of if I was four or five pounds heavier, but I was miserable and I was cranky and I was waking up um, hungry and and I, I didn't like that feeling. Um, I now have a new doctor who is amazing and wonderful. And at my last visit in November, I pointed to the chart and I said, so this chart here thing, it's making me feel bad about myself. And she 
she literally scoffed and sort of threw the back of her hand toward the chart on the wall. And she says, that thing's ridiculous. Don't worry about it. You're fine. I mostly worry about your blood pressure and I worry about your stamina. If you're fine, I'm fine. Your numbers are great. Your blood work is great. Don't worry about that thing. And so then I got, I got to thinking about this. What is the purpose of this whole BMI thing? And, and probably, hopefully in our lifetime, certainly in our children's lifetime, it'll get modified. It'll get thrown out. I think it'll turn the way of the food pyramid and that we now all look at the food pyramid and we're like, oh, well, of course, this was designed to make money. This was designed to sell grain. Um, this is ridiculous. This isn't what a human body needs. This was a marketing ploy. Um, probably the BMI charts was a way to um, sell insurance, um, sell life insurance, keep people um, in this category where they needed to pay more to access certain things, and also a way to make money on um, pharmaceuticals and help fuel the diet industry. Um, so if you look at those things with those eyeballs and, and light and, and just awareness, um, I think that might be really helpful. Um, okay, still on Valentine's Day. And so I just, I... I woke up to a quote in my email about unconditional love. And so I want to read that to you. Um, and it's love intentionally, extravagantly, unconditionally. The broken world awaits in darkness for the light that is you. And that is a quote by L.R. Nost who I haven't Googled. I don't actually know who L.R. Nost is, but I really, really liked that quote. And I wanted you to do that. I wanted you to love yourself unconditionally. And if you don't right now, that's okay. You're not doing it wrong. It's okay to notice that you're not loving yourself unconditionally and just be aware and then slowly pivot from where you are to where you want to go. There's an Eleanor Roosevelt quote, and it um, it's, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And uh, true, love Eleanor Roosevelt. I think that's a great quote. But it also used to kind of make me feel bad because at times I did feel bad. And I felt like there was something wrong with me for feeling bad. And I don't want you to gaslight yourself into thinking that having a human emotion of feeling bad, of feeling sad, of feeling depressed, of feeling despondent is wrong and you have to quickly fix it. No. Pay attention to how you're feeling. Acknowledge it and love yourself through it. And then when you're ready, slowly, carefully, thoughtfully start shifting towards feelings that you want to feel, but love yourself through it. Love yourself unconditionally. Before I sign off and we'll put these in the show notes, I wanted to drop a few episodes for you to go back and listen to if this was interesting for you. Um, episode 36 is becoming resilient. And that consistently is one of the most downloaded um, episodes that I've recorded. I recorded it a few years ago. Now um, I get messages about it. I get lovely emails. I had a lady named Tracy write to me and she said that um, she had, she listens to it in her car three or so times a week while she's commuting. And she has lost track of how many times she's listened to episode 36, but every time something in it speaks to her in a different way. And so she just wanted to thank me. And so thank you, Tracy, for taking the time to write to me. But then also think about that. Listen to things in a new way. 
We, we go back to, to watching the Gilmore Girls with fresh eyes, watching Friends with fresh eyes and paying attention to that was a sign of the times. And, and, and yes, and, and just loving those actresses, actually, interestingly enough, loving those actresses who at the time, maybe, maybe on screen are portraying an active eating disorder where they didn't love themselves enough to feel confident in their skin. Um, so, so just pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. Um, 69, should there be suffering? Um, no, <laughs> there should not be. That's a spoiler alert. But that's a really good um, kind of episode to look into and, and listen again with fresh ears if you haven't listened to it. Because sometimes people think that in order to get to the next step, they really have to hit rock bottom. They really have to suffer. Um, and, and so just pay attention to that if you might have that mindset. 71, self-loathing. This comes up a lot with um, diet culture and and it and it's something to just pay attention to. I was talking to a coaching client and she said something like, well, back when I was skinny and pretty, I was able to do this, this, and this, and I wore too close. I said, okay, so I love you. And I don't want that to roll off your tongue as easily as it did. So you saying back when I was skinny and pretty, uh-uh, skinny does not equal pretty and pretty does not equal skinny. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to how you're talking to yourself and, and self-loathing and beating yourself up in the brain. We all know that doesn't work. We, we I mean, it, it, it just doesn't work. It reminds me of Dr. Phil yelling at a stage of people telling them you're fat because you want to be fat. So that doesn't help. That That's that's not nice. That's toxic and, and derogatory. And um, you are perfect and wonderful and lovely and amazing, exactly who you are. If you want to shift something, do it because you want to be a better version of yourself, not because you don't like this version and, and you want to kind of destroy her or kill her in some way. And then 72, deciphering data. Pay attention to some numbers. Um, your A1C number, your blood pressure number. Um, yes, there's the number on the scale, but that is not the only marker of health. I love my Fitbit. I love tr paying attention to my steps. I don't obsessively track them because it's not good for my brain to think I have to log something every day. And if I don't log it, that I've failed. So it's not something that I personally do, but pay attention to it and, and maybe decide on purpose for 30 days, you're going to track some data, um, maybe your water intake, um, maybe your step count. I am a runner. I like running. I have a goal for myself for this year to run a mile in a certain amount of time. And so I'm just paying attention to that. Um, I'm recording this on Valentine's Day. I am better running now than I was six weeks ago. Um, and I know if I continue to run one mile two or three times a week, at the end of the year, probably will be a better runner. And also what's helpful for me is I have Sheldon. And so I always joke with people that Basset hounds are prone to obesity and so am I. So one of the best ways for me and for Sheldon to ward that off is to run a few times a week. And I like it and he likes it. And he, gosh, he's such a great little baby boy. I love that dog. But he knows um, because we wear a different collar and we use a different leash. And I kind of attach the leash to this um, running belt that I have. He knows, oh, okay, mom's going on a run now. I'm going on a run too. And he acts different. He he, he gets all spunky and it's exciting when he's in. And it's just absolutely adorable. Highly recommend Basset Hounds. Okay. Today, wherever you are, know that I love you. I think you're worthy and I think you're amazing. And my hope is no matter what, 
you begin to start thinking some positive thoughts about yourself and loving yourself. And if you're not there yet, that is okay. That is just something to pay attention to. And there's nothing wrong with you for not being there. It's, it's just data. It's just something to work towards. You're not dead yet. For lucky life is long. And I really do think that you'll, all of the things, all of the ideas, all of the achievements you want to do will happen. And maybe the name of the game is you don't get it all done in this lifetime. And that's okay. But keep doing the next best thing the best you can. All right, pretty people. Consider yourself loved and hugged. I'm so proud of you. I think you're wonderful. Talk to you again next week. Do you have a slow living story to share? Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments, feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living lifestyle and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.